what we are presenting at, at ESMO this year is uh, very much uh, basically out of our normal uh, area of research as it is uh, focused on the SARS-CoV-2 CD8 T cell uh, specific response. And uh, usually we are a lab that works on the tumor specific uh, CD8 T cell response. Uh, but we have this uh, screening platform that allows us to identify the exact T cell epitopes uh, that can be recognized. Uh, so this work for, uh, uh, that we are presenting this year at ESMO, uh, there we, uh, we, are, we did a prediction of, um, of which epitopes that may be immunogenic from the entire SARS-CoV-2 proteome. And then we used our screening technology to identify uh, T-cell epitopes. And we have found um, a collection of, um, of uh, nine different epitopes that were recognized uh, by T-cells uh, isolated from COVID patients. And, uh, and what's very interesting about our findings is that we have this one epitope that is from a part of the viral uh, proteome that is not usually included in, um, in vaccine design uh, for SARS-CoV-2. Uh, so it's, it's uh, from the open reading frame 1AB, which is encoding a protein that is uh, important for uh, uh, viral replication. And this uh, one uh, particular epitope, which is uh, restricted by um, HLA-A0101, uh, we find it to be immune dominant, which means that it's a main driver of the T cell response towards uh, the virus. Uh, so what we have done, of course, our sample set is still uh, quite limited in size, which is important to keep in mind. Uh, but what we see is that this particular response uh, was present in all patients positive for HLA A0101. Um, and it is of a substantially higher magnitude compared to all the other responses that we detected across patients, but it's also of substantially higher magnitude uh, within patients. So for part of the patients um, that were a uh, HLA A0101 positive, we had additional responses towards SARS-CoV-2, and the, this particular response was of uh, more than 20-fold uh, higher magnitude in comparison. And then uh, one, one uh, parameter that's known to drive whether an epitope is, is an immune dominant epitope or not uh, is uh, the pre precursor frequency. So basically how many T cell clones that are contributing to the response. Um, and, uh, and so we obtained uh, T cell uh, receptor sequencing data. And uh, based on that data, we see a very high uh, clonal diversity that is contributing to the T cell population recognizing the epitope, which is further supporting that this um, particular epitope is uh, really an immune dominant epitope for patients that are uh, HLA-A0101 positive. So that's of course, uh, in, in the sense of fundamental science, a very uh, interesting observation, uh, but it can also have implications in terms of vaccine design because you uh, traditionally, when developing vaccines, it has always been an aim to include the uh, immunodominant epitopes to ensure that you would um, induce very strong responses with the vaccine. However, uh, at this point in time, of course, um, we don't know um, how many different immunodominant epitopes there would be uh, from the SARS-CoV-2, uh, depending on the HLA typing of uh, each person. Uh, so, of course, this is just the first one and we would need to do uh, much more work uh, to identify additional immunodominant epitopes. Um, and also, we know that when you remove an immunodominant epitope, another epitope can take over. So it can be that the vaccines that are primarily, for instance, focusing on the structural proteins, and in particular the spike protein, that they can also um, encode uh, epitopes that can be immunodominant. Um, then after identifying these T-cell responses, what we did was that we tried to characterize them. So first, we wanted to examine their functional capacity, and we did this uh, using peptide stimulation and then T-cell effector cytokine production as a readout. And we were actually not able uh, to detect any identified responses, uh, both uh, the immune dominant responses, but also other responses based on cytokine production. And we had included like really standard uh, effects of cytokines that can also be produced by uh, more exhausted T cells like interferon gamma, um, but also TNF alpha and IL2. And we really could not detect uh, anything based on these cytokines, um, indicating uh, that these responses were completely dysfunctional. 
Um, and, and for that, it's important uh, to know that the, all the material we used from the COVID patients were uh, collected during uh, ongoing uh, severe and critical disease. Um, and then uh, after having seen that there was this no uh, clear functionality in response to peptides, we decided to do uh, unbiased characterization of the T-cells. And we did this uh, doing single cell RNA sequencing. Um, and uh, we had the data uh, from both uh, SARS-CoV-2 specific T-cells and the data from uh, bulk uh, CD8 T-cells uh, from uh, these patients. And, and what the, this analysis revealed was that the, um, um, what was that the, the, the SARS-CoV-2 specific T cells, they have a very um, a specific uh, gene program uh, which really uh, keeps the SARS-CoV-2 uh, uh, specific T cells in check. So we, we found uh, that, of course, in comparison to naive cells, the SARS-CoV-2 uh, specific cells had the pathways associated with T cell activation upregulated, which is of course not a surprise, uh, but they also had a number of uh, pathways upregulated that were um, associated with the regulation of the T cells. And then when we compared the SARS-CoV-2 specific T cells to um, bulk uh, activated CD8 T cells, we, could, uh, we found that the genes associated with T cell activation were downregulated whereas genes associated with the inhibition of T-cell regulation were upregulated. But we also saw that genes associated with the, the survival, so the maintenance of the T-cells were upregulated, uh, really showing that these T-cells um, are basically kept, uh, kept in check and uh, that they are probably in this state uh, due to overactivation through the T-cell receptor. Uh, but at the same time, uh, they are um, in a state where they can survive and hopefully eventually become a memory response so these patients would have immunity. The conclusions of our findings are really showing that, um, that the SARS-CoV-2 specific T cell response uh, may, um, or the CD8, the, the CD8 specific T cell response against SARS-CoV-2, uh, that they are dysfunctional and kept in check during ongoing um, treatment or ongoing infections or not treatment, and that this uh, may be a very cautious first hint, as the data set is still very small, that the, the CD8 T cells may not be able to contribute to this immunopathology uh, that we are uh, seeing in a, in a large proportion of the hospitalized uh, COVID-19 patients.